<laughs> yeah, that's a good one. What's up, Columbus? Can't see me in the shot, but it's Trey talking to you. You're seeing in front of you the members of Dope. How you guys doing this evening? Oh, tired, man. Exhausted. Tired. Burnt. How you guys doing over here? We're all right. Pretty good. <laughs> good, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your forthcoming uh, CD, uh, Felons and Revolutionaries? Um, what do you want to know, man? Um, you know, the, your musical style, the, the way your songs are produced. You've heard the record. What do you think? Oh, it's a great, fu killer fucking record, man. I, it's like punk rock meets industrial. I kind of think that's what it sounds like. That doesn't bother me at all. You guys? That sounds about right. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what punk bands are you guys into? You guys into any punk at all? Um, not really. Like the only the only bit of punk that that I guess from at least my influence was uh, was just like '80s metal and fucking Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and that kind of crap. But like the early stuff, um, which had a punk edge to it. I think a lot of the reason that people get a punk vibe from from us nowadays is because uh, we don't drop tune a lot. Most bands drop tune down to like. B and A nowadays, and a lot of our stuff's just in straight 440, which gives it more of a, you know, a bite. So it's, uh, you know, I guess it just gives it more of a punk vibe, which is cool, you know. I just, I, it just seems to so many bands just, they, they hit that low E string, and it just sounds like every other buddy else's low E string. So I said, well, let me tune mine up a little higher. And, ah, it sounds different. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like it did fucking six years ago, so. Fuck yeah, man. Do you guys uh, like Misfits at all? You guys into that? Aren't you into the Misfits? Uh, I've, I've liked them, but they're not I like, like the dolls. Yeah. I've listened to Dude, the Misfits toys look fucking bitchin'. No, Have you seen them? I haven't seen those oh, yet. No. Dude, I fucking saw them in a comic book uh, catalog. Like, the Misfits dolls are gonna be rad, dude. Wow, can't wait. Yeah, they're killer, die. man. Hell yeah. Uh, what made you guys choose Fuck the Police to do a cover of, which is a really fucking cool song? Um, honestly... I wanted to do a, a cover song that couldn't get on the radio. Um, that was really important to me. And I also uh, wanted to do a cover song I had a lot of freedom with. Um, you know, Fuck the Police originally is just an 808 bass drum and, uh, and rap over top of it. It doesn't have any music. So uh, we got to basically compose an entire song around somebody else's aggression and, uh, and lyrics and do it our style and, you know, kind of wrote a song. You know, a lot of kids hear it and they're like, Wow, fuck the police. That's a cool idea. I'm like, wait, Junior, let me educate you. Let me take you back about 10 years yeah. to these boys called NWA that were pissed off about some shit in yeah, L.A. Exactly. So uh, we just like to think that we took that song from L.A., took it back, and threw, it, threw a little East Coast spin on it. Yeah, dude. Did it over again. Is that one of your favorite songs to perform? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really good because right now, because the record's not out, um, it's one of the songs that's the easiest to get crowd participation on because it's really, you know, a lot of people like to scream fuck the police. Fuck yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it's cool because it's, it's one that the crowd can really fucking get into even though they don't have the record. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely fun. It's definitely, definitely fun song live. You guys get into it as well, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, uh, how did your band take form? I'll, I'll take this one. I'll field it. Uh, be careful now. Okay, now let me make this sure. Is a, this is a minefield. Uh, well, actually, uh, my brother, Edsel, and I, we started off uh, just fucking around and uh, pretty much started the band in our house. You know, started making songs. He started writing ago. songs a couple years ago. And then uh, just as everything grew, we just grabbed these other guys, brought them in, and uh, he was actually the first one. It was kind of you. Actually, the first one. Yes, first. first you know. It was, on board. it was kind of an accident, honestly, because uh, he'd never been in a band before, and uh, I was kicking around New York City because I'd moved up to New York where he had already lived, and was, uh, you know, this was what I wanted to do for sure, and started writing some songs, and he was helping influence with uh, his industrial background and whatnot. He used to be a DJ and he's always been into industrial, and. Uh, we were like, man, you should play keyboards and like do crazy samples and weird sounds and we'll start a band and call it dope. Like, yeah, that's pretty bitchin'. 
<laughs> yeah, man, let's call the band dope. It'd be kick ass. And then, like, you know, a couple months later, we had this demo tape of some really fucking cool stuff that we started playing for everybody. And we didn't, you know, it wasn't the typical reaction to demos, which is, yeah, it's all right. It was like, man, yeah, this is cool. Definitely. And we were like, wow, all right, I think we got something here. So we kept going with it. And then uh, through a friend of a friend of a friend, we found this fucking character here. And, uh, you know. Are you a character? Very much. <laughs> and just went from there with it. And um, he actually, you know, a lot of people don't know, he actually started out as the bass player. And uh, after our guitar player ended up falling to the wayside, I already had a guitar player before he came along. And uh, when the guitar player fell onto the wayside, he was a guitar player, and he was like, I'd much rather play guitar, man. <laughs> so, uh, Hell yeah, dude. We gave him the opportunity to help the band step up a notch with some little fancy smancy guitar solos. Fuck yeah. So it's all good. Hell yeah, it's all good. Is, uh, is radio something you guys worry about, or you guys want to build your fans through touring? or? Um, I think that radio is like just, it's frosting on the cake, you know? It's like, um, it, it, you know, bottom line is that I listen to our record, and I, you know, obviously I like it because I made it. But, um, but, but live is what it's all about. It's all about touring and playing live and, and playing every night because every night you have the opportunity to start from scratch and just do it all over again. And, and if it's great, it's great. And if it sucks, you can leave it behind and play the next night. Um, but uh, in order to reach as many people with the music that you play, which I think is the goal of anybody that's writing music. You know, radio is something that definitely helps you do that. So um, if radio doesn't come around to us, because we're not going to go to radio. We're not going to sit here and write songs that we think, well, this would maybe be a hit in today's day and age. So if radio decides to come to us and wants to spin our music, I'm not going to be upset about that. I'm going to think that's great. But if they Why don't, yeah, exactly. But if they don't, then cool. You know, we'll just tour and we'll build the band from... It's all good. Yeah, it doesn't matter, man. I mean, that's that's the one thing I feel really confident about is the fact that we've been on tour now for three months bef since, you know, bef and the album's not out. So three months of touring without the record and playing to crowds that are supposed to hate you because you're the band that nobody knows about. Open up, band. Yeah, and people have just been really, really responding well to us, so I, I, have a, I feel really confident that we're going to be able to do as much as we ever dreamed this band could do just by playing live. And if, you know radio picks up and decides that they're going to spin it and people dig that then that's all great more power to you yeah you know oh yeah um what is the message that uh dope is uh, excuse me what is the message that dope is giving um i have to answer this and i'm sorry i don't mean to, to keep, keep stepping on everybody's feet but um you know, I, that's kind of a that's kind of a hard one because nobody has the record yet. That's a that's a question I'd rather answer once people have the record and they can start to to look at it and dig into it and then start asking specific questions. Yeah, it's not just because, one message. Yeah, it's because yeah. for me it's about the song first and foremost. And if you listen to the song and you dig the groove and you dig the lyrics and it starts to get to you, then I got you. And once I got you, then you're gonna start to pay attention to what I have to say. But I don't like to just talk about what the record's about because then I sound like a fucking preacher, and that's not what I'm all about. And I'm not about pushing my views or my artistic bullshit down anybody's throat. And if you dig what I'm doing, then that's cool, and, and you'll get into it, and you'll figure out what's in our head, and um, all that shit will come out in time. But we got several issues. But it's basically, in one word, is just freedom, man. Just being able to do what I want to do without... Artist, artistic freedom, right? Freedom in this country. I mean, obviously we're a free country, but, um, you know, just stay out of my backyard and I'll stay out of your backyard. Definitely how it is. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll tell you, that song, Pig Society, is just one fucking... That's one fucking great song, man. Uh, did you guys... Uh, how did you come up with that? Did you, did, you know, did you uh, have an experience or... Pig Society was kind of based on, uh, like, at the time that I wrote that song, me and my brother were kind of heavy into making money the old-fashioned uh, way. Yeah. And, uh... We weren't prostitutes. Oh, uh, well, we were, you know, we were peddling our asses. <laughs> but, uh, no, we were, you know, we were, we were doing some shit that was, you know, kind of scary, and we were doing it for a while, and... Um, Pig Society was just written from the perspective of where we knew America wanted us to be and thought that we deserved to be. 
Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, once once you guys get the record and you uh, you know you check out the lyrics of that song, you'll you'll know what I mean. Definitely, man. The lyrics are in the record as well. Oh, they'll be printed. Then? Yes. However, fuck the police had to get ghosted on the album because several retailers threatened not to carry the record. So um, it's actually track eight on the album, but it's not listed. So the record goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Eight is missing. Eight is missing. Eight, eight is missing. But it's actually there. It's fuck the police, but it's not listed. Oh, that's a, that's a good fucking idea. That's I pretty want, funny. <laughs> we turned in the album with the you know one through thirteen and a flow that we felt was good, and um, you know they were like, well, we're gonna have to go to the track because all these retailers are pulling it unless we wanted to make a clean version of the album. But then I was afraid that all the retailers would just carry the clean version and nobody could get the real record, yeah. and I wasn't having that. No way. So and I didn't want to take the song and fuck up the order of the record and put it last and do the old typical hidden track yeah. at the end. So I was like, yeah. let's just fucking ghost it where it's at. And all they were right. like, can we do that? Fuck yeah, you can do it, you motherfucker, do it. So they were cool with it, and that was it. That's sweet. That's sweet. I have a question for you guys. Uh, what kind of instruments do you play? What types of guitars? Um, BC Rich, Ibanez, Gibson. Great. I just use like a, a Kai sampler and uh, Roland uh, dummy keyboards, Sweet. MIDI control keyboards. Sweet. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm a Les Paul guy, man. I like my old beat up Les Paul and uh, I got like an old crappy Strat that's got a a Jackson neck, I think, on it, like one of those fucked up little, <laughs> I don't know. But it's all about the Les Paul for me. That's what I like. But Hell yeah. It doesn't matter. What we, I mean, we took every guitar that we have. It doesn't matter what body shape it is. As long as it feels good, we just yank all the pickups out and throw EMGs in them so they all sound the same. That way all our guitars are you know, standard. Fuck yeah, man. We use this new uh, amplification Marshall. Yeah, Marshalls there. Marshall amps. Yeah, this, new, this new thing that just came around, Marshall. Good new company. We back them. <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, Columbus, this is uh, Trey over here, where you can't see me. <laughs> Dope sitting over there. there I promise. We promise. <laughs> well, you guys, uh, check out their new fucking album. Is uh, shit. Let's uh, rewind that a little bit. Let's do the. All right, Columbus, this was the Dope interview here at the Al Rosa Villa. Dope's album, Felons and Revolutionaries, uh, will be coming out September 21st. And they're going to be out on the road with Cold Chamber and Slipknot. So you guys better be fucking out at that shit. You guys got something else to say for us? That's going to be a bloody show. That's all I can say. Oh, yeah. Slipknot is fucking insane. Brutal. See you there? Yeah. Hell yeah. Peace out, y'all. Hey, what's up out there? We're dope. You're watching Let the Revolution Begin.